the process of understanding how bonds are made and how bonds are broken. Since bonds are built up from orbitals, making bonds and breaking bonds is a process of changing orbitals. When we nowadays write on organic mechanism, we are describing in a visual way the exact process of how these bonds are made and broken. We are going to use a simple arrow, but it represents three important features. It's the movement of electrons. Now, your electrons are negatively charged. So, if electrons are moving within a molecule, charge is also moving. So we have the movement of electrons, and we have the movement of negative charge. And these electrons are moving from features in the molecules, lone pairs, or pi systems, or sigma bonds. So the orbitals that carry those electrons are changing in that process. And that means that there is a change in orbital overlap. So the true fundamental test, if the changes in orbital overlap are not reasonable, then however attractive as an idea the mechanism looks, it has no validity. The orbitals have to be able to reach and physically accommodate this change. I've chosen X and Y. This is just to represent parts of molecules. The mechanism that's going to describe this simple process has an arrow starting from the bond where the electrons are and transferring those electrons onto one of the atoms. So I could write that in the fashion at the top here or in the fashion at the bottom. I could take the electrons from the bond and put them on Y at the top or on X at the bottom. So there's two possibilities for this process of breaking a bond. You need to look at the structures that are built up. It is the degree of charge stabilization in these products which is going to determine which direction of these two possibilities that change in bonding is going to take place. The arrows start where the electrons are, they end where negative charge can be well accommodated, or they end at a position in the molecule where there's a possibility to change the bonding in a further way. So there's our first example. This is referred to as heterolytic cleavage. Hetero is different, lysis is cutting, Heterolytic cleavage is cutting the molecule up into two different forms. In this case, an anion form and a cation form. There is an alternative, and that is homolytic cleavage. This is cutting the molecule up to make similar types of ends. So I've written a dot on each of the ends to represent a radical. That's an odd electron system. I've taken a pair of electrons from the sigma bonds, and I've moved that pair of electrons, one in one direction and one in the other direction in the mechanism, to leave one electron associated with X and one associated with Y. Now we can put our bonds back together again. The radicals could recombine, so we can take an, an arrow from each dot and bring them into the center of the molecule where the bonding is forming, and the organic chemist decided to use a single-headed arrow as the representation for one electron moving, whereas if we're making bonds from charged building blocks, here anion reacting with cation, that's two electrons moving, and we use a double-headed arrow. Double-headed arrows always please when you are moving two electrons. On the left, we have starting materials going through to a product. We've made a bond. The arrow that joins those two together is a reaction arrow. So we're using arrows in totally different ways here. This is to describe the mechanism. This is to describe a step in the process where a chemical change has occurred. And for this reaction arrow, strictly speaking, that form of reaction arrow is representing an irreversible chemical change, one which has a strong driving force and is going in only one direction. However, many chemical reactions are more finely balanced than that, and many can go in either direction. So whether you start with a pair of structures that becomes a product, or you start with that alternative material and go back the other way, both processes can be reasonable. So those examples are referred to as reversible because they can go backwards and forwards. And to indicate that reversibility, we use this type of reaction arrow, which has a head pointing left to right and then another head pointing from right to left. 